Thank you very much, and thank you to you brave souls who are still here this late in the day. I appreciate it. And it's, it's really delightful to be here at Cannes, and I have to say, as the, um, the leader of a research company that's probably most famous for doing copy testing, it's also just a little bit daunting. Not because we don't always see eye to eye in the research and the creative community, but because of the sheer amount of talent that you find every year at the Cannes Festival. Um, so it's a great opportunity to open a dialogue between research and creative and share a little bit with you about what we've seen and hopefully over the next 35 to 40 minutes convince you that measurement is not the natural enemy of creative and used correctly, it can even be an important part of the creative process. So here's what we'd like to um, accomplish here this afternoon. Joanna Seddon, my colleague, is the head of our consulting practice, Millward Brown Optimore. And when we first started planning this presentation, Joanna decided that she would tackle it very much like she tackles a consulting assignment and went instantly into discovery phase. The obvious starting place was to have some in-depth interviews and discussions with those of you in the creative community. We also talked to some academics and some clients to get a sense of what was on your mind about measurement, what you thought was valuable, what you thought was troubling. And in the next few minutes, Joanna will share that with you. Then I'll spend a few minutes um, on what we believe measurement can contribute to the creative process and some very simple um, findings that we've gleaned from analyzing the 50,000 ads that we've, we've got in our database. And finally, we'll wrap up by sharing a little bit on what we're calling ROC, which is return on creativity, if you will. Um, some of this stems from some work that we did for Procter & Gamble a year or so ago, um, where they looked at the brands that had grown their brand value most quickly over the past five years. So they weren't the biggest brands, but they were the brands that sort of had the highest rate of acceleration. And we tried to determine what they did to create such tremendous value. And I, I hope you'll be pleased and maybe a little surprised to find out that even with a metric as financially driven as brand value, we found one of the key drivers was brand artistry. So we'll spend a little bit of time telling you about the contribution of creative to, to our clients' wealth and well-being. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joanna to share with you what she found in the discovery process. Okay, so I'll give you a bit of background on what we did. We talked to a sample of leading creatives. We talked to people who've chaired the Cannes jury, and we talked to hot young creatives who won Golden Lions here last year. And we talked to people from different agencies, so Ogilvy, JWT, Gray, but also people who've worked at Saatchi, BBH, BBDO, and Johannes Leonardo, and others, just to get a cross-section. Um, we asked two simple but not easy questions. The first is, what makes great creative? And the second is, how should it be evaluated? The first thing we heard from everybody we talked to is that advertising is not art. This was unequivocal, unequivocal there was an insistence upon it. The creatives were modest and quite embarrassed at the idea of being called artists. So they spoke of themselves as the practitioners of a craft, a trade, who's with one and one only purpose, which is to sell. And we went away and looked into this a little bit more closely, and we weren't 100% sure that they are right. So can advertising be art? Not all advertising is art, by any means, but some advertising definitely is. Absolute's 25-year campaign blurred the boundaries between art and advertising and turned a Swedish niche vodka into a great global brand as a result. Fade Joggart here on the right used the imprint from a Turner watch to create a really artistic uh, creative which established its Greek yogurt as a luxury brand. If you look at it the other way around, can art be advertising? Not all art is advertising, but a great deal of art is about selling. Caveman art was selling the hunt. Come hunt with me, I'm going to catch it. Religious art, think of all those Madonnas down the centuries. It was selling religion. What's the difference between selling religion and selling a toothbrush? Perhaps not that much. And in a last more modern example, you have art selling advertising. Also, 
Both advertising and art create value. Here we have Jackson Pollock's number five, which is the most expensive painting uh, ever sold at just under $150 million. And alongside it, the E-Trade Super Bowl ad, uh, which led to 15% increase in accounts and $2 billion in new assets. And to quote a uh, Princeton professor we talked to who specializes in creativity, advertising can be art just as much as a painting in the Metropolitan Museum. The difference is the channel rather than the content. Our first question was, what makes great creative? When we asked this, we heard from everybody that it's about engagement. It's about creating consumer involvement and complicity. But there was less certainty about what's the right way to achieve this. Is it to take the approach of some of the hottest creative around and focus on surprise and shock, almost disruption for disruption's sake? 